Hey, a big welcome to Youth Online. Really glad you're here. Uh, my name's Sean. I'm the youth worker here for SGSU Youth. Tonight, we've got a great night lined up for you. We're going to have some worship and then we've got a talk from our very own Mike Elliott all about solitude and being alone, which might come quite naturally <laughs> at the moment. That's a bit awkward. Uh, but anyway, that's what we're going to do. A couple of things to tell you about first is we've got our quiz night coming up on Saturday night, 7.30pm. We streamed live on YouTube. You can gather yourself a group together, grab some friends or some family, get together on a video call or if it's your family, then on your sofa. Um, it's all for fun, no prizes, but really good. Last time we had nine teams, so I hope you can be a part of that. We're also trying to inform what our series is going to be about in the spring. It's going to be called Hashtag Trending. Uh, and we want your ideas for topics to include. Now, we started this off with our old youth on Thursday, and you can see we've already got quite a few suggestions in. So if you go to the website that's on the screen, that's sledo.com, uh, type in the code SGSG Youth, you'll be able to put your thoughts in to the word cloud. And we're going to leave that open for a couple of weeks and see what ideas we get back. And then we'll have a vote. But on to tonight. Let's pray first. God, thank you that we can still do church just in a weird and slightly different way. Uh, thank you that you have been there for us this week and as we look at being alone and we look at solitude tonight help us to work out what you might be saying to us in terms of how you might want us to live our lives a little differently amen let's worship together Jesus, Jesus, we 
Hello everyone, good evening. Welcome to my office. Um, not much to see. Nice cabinet, a couple of flowers here on the wall. Um, this evening we're going to take a bit of a look at solitude. Is it a positive thing, a negative thing? What does it mean to us? Um, obviously I'm grateful to the government for starting lockdown 2.0, so it all seems a bit more relevant. Um, I obviously checked the definition with my glamorous assistant Alexa. Uh, who told me, according to Wikipedia, solitude is a state of seclusion or isolation. It can be both positive and negative, a lack of contact with people. Now, given the year that we've all had or are still having, um, we've all seen or experienced to some extent the negative impacts of long term isolation. Um, I'd like to talk a bit about how short periods of time alone can help us. Uh, but I think we need to recognise where we are at. Um, we've all been sort of forced to isolate from friends and family, uh, stop doing the things that we enjoy, uh, no school, no church, you know, the list uh, goes on. And I'm sure that like me, you've, uh, you have elderly relatives who you've been sort of worried about or they've been isolated or had to go into hospital um, on, on their own. So I'm sure you've got your kind of stories of what the impact's been. So I'd like to suggest when we break out back into groups, um, we start maybe by sharing or reflecting on how lockdown 1.0 affected uh, you or your family um, and what's going to be different or the same this time around in lockdown 2.0. But I don't think it, uh, it has to all be, uh, it's all been bad news. I mean, for example, I managed to get my my mum and dad to start making video calls on WhatsApp um, wasn't always easy and it, it was a bit like mum mum you've got to turn the video on the video on uh, right all I can see is carpet you've got you've got to no 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 don't turn the phone turn anyway you know what I mean uh, sometimes it's a bit like a, an IT help desk but obviously it was a great benefit to my parents as they got to see my beautiful face don't comment don't come in. So um, let's now look uh, at how some time to ourselves will actually help us um, and also why this can also help us develop our faith and our relationship with God. It's generally now thought that some time alone, sort of short term solitude, not long term isolation, is good for us, whether we are extroverts or naturally introverts. A bit of personal space or solid solitude uh, can be valuable time to get some work done, some time to think things through, or just to rest and relax. So, so maybe it, it could be a case of um, it was quiet, everyone was out of the house, so I finally got my assignment finished. Or maybe um, I went for a walk or a run or a sit, delete as appropriate, on the common on my own. It gave me a chance to think things through. Or maybe uh, it was a sunny day, the birds were singing and I was out in the garden with a nice cold uh, beer, gin and tonic, can of coke, um, select the appropriate product for your uh, age and circumstances. So sitting there in the garden and just doing nothing, great. So I think perhaps the second point to consider when you get there to your groups um, is just when was the last time you just did nothing on your own? No phone, no film, just nothing. Now, as Christians, we often hear a bit about the practice or the discipline of solitude. Um, so is it something that's just good for our mental health, our well-being, um, or are there other reasons? So for me, there are two real reasons. There's probably more, but Sean said 10 minutes, that's your lot. So. My two reasons would be, firstly, that God speaks most to us when we are still and quiet. And it's, it happens most often that way. And secondly, um, has to be, well, Jesus did it and quite a lot. So we'll come back to him uh, in a bit. No offense. Um, 
So when we take time, though, to focus on God, to draw close to him, that is when we hear from him. So firstly, I'd like to look at uh, one of the famous characters, one of the most famous characters in the Bible, Elijah. Now, he had just been doing some amazing things, uh, demonstrating God's power to the Jewish people. But he was now exhausted. Um, he was on the run. People wanted to kill him. He had had enough. So he called out to God and God had led him, uh, led him to Horeb, the mountain of God, where God said he was going to pass by. And this is what happened. So we're in uh, 1 Kings 19. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face, went out and stood in the mouth of the cave. Um, so, yes, here we do have God showing off a bit with the ultimate earth, wind and fire show. But then he is present in a gentle whisper. And that is what Elijah responds to. Now, our lives these days are typically busy and loud perhaps more earthquake than calm. So the challenge to me is, uh, do I spend enough time listening for the still small voice of God? My experience, and I think that of many who've been doing this Christian thing for a while, would say that it's when we come and are still before God, that's when we hear him. Not maybe as, a, as an audible voice, but more often as a sense within our, our minds that our thoughts are being guided, that God is directing us. When we focus on him, he is in the midst of our thinking. Now, uh, let's time travel um, a bit, a few hundred years to Jesus. Always a good reference point. Uh, now, Jesus is rightly famous for in no particular order, um, healing the sick, looking after the poor and the oppressed, challenging injustice, breaking the religious rules, obviously dying on a cross and rising from the dead. But as he lived his life and as he did these things, he also spent time on his own, um, away from the crowds, away from his disciples, spending time with his heavenly father. Now, um, in Luke, Luke 5, there's a great story. Uh, a man with leprosy comes and says, if you want to, you can heal me. And Jesus says, I do want to be healed. And, you know, people heard about this and, and they were, you know, they were amazed. Uh, and, and it just drew people in. Everyone was talking about it. Everybody wanted to come and hear Jesus preach um, and be healed by him themselves. Now, that story ends with uh, the verse, verse 16. Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. Um, and later in, in, chapter, in chapter six, before Jesus calls his disciples, he spent a night on a mountain in prayer. So away from everyone, he spent time, time on his own and time with God. Um, now, I'm not suggesting that we all need to take a three day retreat to a monastery in a, uh, on a mountain in Israel. But let's um, maybe look at how we can create some space and time to come and be still and silent before God. Spend five or ten minutes in silence. Um, it's not that frightening. It really isn't. And then uh, as you get used to it, you can try 20 minutes, half an hour, um, whatever. But we will find it beneficial. Um, we all know that there are these days so many devices, profiles, accounts, we can check and fill every second of our days with communication or social media of uh, one sort or another. Um, and, and today's connectivity, well, has many great advantage, uh, great advantages, obviously, but it does mean that now more than ever, there are no natural breaks. There's no natural times of silence. Um, even if we're walking to school 
or waiting for a train on our own, we may not really be on our own. We, we could be ordering a new pair of shoes or, or watching a film or, or just making a call um, to, to someone. Either way, it may mean that we have to choose not to plug in to the social world all of the time to create some space, some solitude for ourselves. If we then use some of this space and solitude to focus on God, we will find that he will draw close to us. And it is in these times that we will hear his voice. So uh, my suggestion to you now is to um, is to reflect a little bit on the impact uh, that self-isolating and lockdown has had on us. Then to, to look at Jesus, how he took himself away to be alone with God and, and what that could mean could mean for us. And then let's think, what would it practically mean? How can we make space to be alone with him? Um, that's, uh, so that's, that's all I've got for you for, for tonight. So thanks for listening and I hope you all have a fantastic evening. Okay, so now it's over to you. We've got a couple of questions that are going to come up on the screen for you to think through and then a bit of the Bible to read as well and think about it. If you've got family or siblings around, you might want to discuss this with them. Otherwise, you can do it on your own. And if you've got any questions, just drop us a message or drop it in the comments. But thank you for joining us this week and we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you.